my name is Yosa, and I'm going to be talking about um, hackingglass.com, aka native apps for Google Glass. And I'll be showing you a few live examples that you can then tr uh, try out, uh, because um, this is one of the things that you kind of just have to try out to see what it's like. Um, OK, so as a very broad overview about, um, oh, most of you probably know that there's the, there's the REST-based API called Mirror API for Glass. That's um, the one that Google has been kind of um, um, kind of marketing the both uh, the most. Um, there's also um, the elusive GDK, or say native app development for Glass. Um, GDK is pretty elusive, but even though GDK isn't officially out yet, you can start developing for Glass pretty much right now if you know just some basic Android. Um, so my sort of method is to just look at what sensors are available on this device. And so this is um, from Catwig. They did a um, teardown of Glass. And um, I kind of highlighted each of the components that are imp good input devices. And um, I'm going to highlight really, really, really quickly what they do and um, also how the design methodology differs for traditional Android tablet and phone development versus um, for Glass. OK, so beginning with input output. Um, so the input sensors for Google Glass include a touchpad. And the key thing here is that this is not a touch screen. And I'll talk more about that later. There is a camera with 5 megapixel 720p video. There's a light sensor, which gives you a single axis reading from 0 to 64,000. And then there's the InventSense gyro accelerometer and three axis uh, compass. And you actually get GPS, and there is also a microphone. And then there's the output. And this is how you see this stuff through glass. Um, there is a tiny LCD display that projects onto an optic. The display itself is a 640 by 360 LCD screen, but it's actually projected onto the glass. And I'll demonstrate well for you guys to see this. I'm going to take a photo of you guys. And there's going to be this thing that shows up here uh, that shows you. It looks really small to you, but it's actually a little bit bigger because the optic kind of projects it to roughly um, between 8 and 10 feet in front of you. It's adjustable in the front, depending on people's um, eyesight or whatever. Uh, and so that uh, varies the actual projection uh, through a distance. Um, there's also the bone conduction microphone, which unlike your in-ear microphones, it uses your bone to uh, project sound through. And so um, the key thing is that uh, if it's really noisy, because it's not going right through your ear, you just cover your ears, and you can kind of hear it uh, in your head. And the final Apple modality is that this is happening in the real world. So unlike um, your phone, you, you're not like holding your phone up there. It kind of is uh, more or less seamless and not yet that invasive. You're not, say, actually uh, crossing the line and becoming like a Borg or something with it being uh, medically or biologically uh, drilled into you. Uh, <laughs> So let's see, output. And then there's the sensor design constraints. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, there is uh, not a touch screen. There's a touch pad and a display. And if, if, you, if you were looking at details, the resolution of the touch pad and the screen are very different. So you have a display to touch ratio that is not your usual one to one, which you probably um, become used to if you develop for any touch base uh, medium up to now. Um, so the, the touch ratio is actually kind of odd. So uh, in your design constraints, you should kind of uh, think about that. Because the touchpad is super long, whereas the, touch, uh, whereas the screen display is actually you know, your regular 16 by 9. Um, and also, the, um, the onboard um, sensors are kind of um, buggy. So you're going to have to use sensor fusion to uh, do a lot of cross-checking to get any good data from it. Also, the thing with bone conduction speaker, I started talking about it earlier. Uh, so when you're in a noisy environment, you, you, know, you can basically blast your music up really loud in your earphones. But with bone conduction, if you guys are talking right now, I would not be able to hear my phone conversation unless I you know, go like this in my ears. And also, there's noise pollution. So in the uh, op opposite case, where you're in a quiet room, uh, everyone's pretty much going to hear what, uh, your, uh, what's happening through your uh, microphone, uh, through, through your speakers. And finally, the battery on this device is surprisingly only 507 milliampere hours. Uh, so that's like a fraction of that of the iPhone 5s. So that's uh, one thing to keep in mind when designing apps for glass, and which is probably also why the Mirror API has been the more popular sort of modality currently. Um, because running any sort of native apps that use OpenGL and stuff, it just totally drains the battery really quickly. Um, OK, so sense of design constraints. and. So that was like my lightning quick overview of the sensors for glass. So when you make an APK for glass, you are basically developing for ice cream sandwich, Android 4. But like I mentioned earlier, this is a different form factor. So the touchpad does not map one-to-one -to, -one to the screen. And also, you have bone conduction speakers. 
And keep in mind that this is a small embedded device, not like your latest quad core Android magic phone. It has very little RAM. Uh, there's basically about 500 megs of RAM to work with. And nowadays, with everybody using all kinds of uh, managed code and frameworks and stuff, you know, your RAM and memory leaks kind of just keep on uh, getting crazy and stuff. And the, the weird processor, well, I guess that's more subjective because um, as a, there's a lot of fragmentation with Android, but um, they're using TI here. You, typically, you're using Qualcomm or one of the bigger ones. And so if you're doing like GPU optimization for this, it's very, very, very sort of niche thing that you are going to be optimizing for. Um, and finally, again, the battery life is very, very short. Um, okay, so let's go on to the demos. All right, so I'm going to be using something that's gonna be doing like maybe five frames per second at best, um, connecting through USB 2, because glass isn't the USB 3. Um, so this is micro USB from glass to my computer, and I'm gonna project it through um, Android um, screen monitor. Um, and I'm probably gonna use my um, voice instead. Um, okay. And, oh, the, the key thing is if you guys see a black screen, uh, that's when it disconnected. So like, yell out if you see a black screen because I'm probably gonna be looking all around. Okay, so um, this is the default screen when you first open Glass up. It's, um, yeah. So we're going to use um, a custom launcher that lets you just run any APK that you have installed. And I have a bunch of crap here. Um, oh, sorry. Um, connect, ASM. All right, here we go. All right, so um, I meant, well, earlier you saw the OK Glass screen and I opened this custom launcher called Launchy. You can Google up the Launchy APK for, to get the uh, custom launcher. And again, this lets you load pretty much any APK you want to load. Um, this is kind of, well, the hackish way to do that. Uh, first thing we'll go with um, system info. Uh, although I shouldn't load that, but um, it gives you a broad overview of what sensor readings there are. And um, actually, wait, that's a different build. Um, a really quick way to quit the app is to touch hold, um, and that's what I just did. Um, I'm gonna start by, this is a different build. I'm gonna start with glass trombone, I guess. That's um, to go with the order of, um, did it get disconnected again? No, it's still there, okay. But um, as it's loading, so the idea is that this is an example where you're mapping the touchpad to a screen and you're also using the light sensor, which I mentioned there is a light sensor from zero to 64,000 values like that. Um, okay, so this is, uh, none, of, oh God, uh, none of these are provided by Google, but um, if you do any Android development, you can use the same sensor event stuff that you, uh, you know, from the Android um, API and um, also, you know, invent sense uh, for their sensor fusion sort of tricks and stuff like that. Um, okay, this is annoying. I should get a better, I should get a longer USB cord or something. Here we go. Okay, it's a glass trombone, basically. You're using the touchpad to swipe this little trombone uh, handle. And to play the trombone, you uh, go like this. And this is where I wish you guys could hear me. But uh, it's seeing phone conduction right now. Can you kind of hear? Yeah. yeah so, um, and it's not that loud currently. I should probably maximize the volume on this. But as I'm dragging, so there's different colors that represent um, the 12 tone. Uh, well, instead of I basically quantize it to 12 tones as opposed to a continuous spectrum. Um, and basically, it's kind of a glassy way to play trombone. So. Um, the light meter currently is reading zero. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna turn it to a larger, a dark, here we go, a brighter light source that's disconnected. And here we go. So each time it goes from zero to, okay, stop going to sleep blast. Zero to 10, it plays the note, and then I'm sliding by moving this thing here. And, right, again, try this out later. So the idea is that you pin light a note that you want to play with the sort of white thing that this thing here, oh, disconnected. Uh, did it? 
but it's not updating the frame. Here we go. It's very slow, I guess. It's like one frame per second. It's much smoother on the glass. Um, and then you slide the touchpad to move the trombone. So the design modality here was that because this is 1366 by 187 on the touchpad and only, it's basically a, you know, a one, one directional thing or you know, X axis only. Uh, so you slide to move it and then like there's light meters so you kind of cup your thing like this and it goes to zero and then you can detect for when it changes to um, say when it goes bright and that's when you like, you know, blow the mouthpiece by uh, hitting your eye kind of. Um, and then you can experience um, bone conduction waste pollution. Uh, right. Try it out on this or that eventually, um, after eventually, yeah. Um, OK, and then there's also glass pong. So glass pong uh, uses swipe gestures and you do the usual touch phases to um, navigate a pong ball in 3D. Um, there we go. Glass pong. That's updating a slow frame rate. So here we go. All right. So wow, this is updating at like one frame per second. Um, it's much faster on this thing. So it's like, you know, first person Pong. And it's an infinite play mode where you never die for the demo's sake. Uh, so basically, each time you, the paddle hits, you can we swipe the paddle. And uh, if you swipe far, it goes faster. If you swipe slower, it, you know, just like Pong, but in 3D. Uh, and so, um, so basically the same touch phases that work on regular, you know, your usual Android iOS dev techniques that they work on this as well. And um, for example, there's touch begin and there's touch end that you want to track and stuff like that. Um, and let's have it bounce weirdly. Um, there we go. Yeah, I'm not, oops, sorry, you guys aren't seeing this. Uh, yeah, it's running at, for some reason, the. The, the stream through USB is very slow, I guess. Um, but it's running at a much better frame rate on glass. Uh, right. So, and then there's also a glass shootout, which um, uses, well, both glass pong and glass shootout have multiplayer modes using um, Bluetooth and Wi Fi. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's RF, there's RF chips on, on, these, on this device for Bluetooth and for Wi-Fi, but not for 3G or 4G. So that's something to keep in mind. You always have to keep it paired to some sort of Wi-Fi network to use uh, the internet. OK, so here's um, Glass Shootout, which um, Glass Shootout. Uh, so basically, this is an example of sensor fusion, uh, where you're moving your head wherever you want to like shoot things. OK. Wow, the frame rate is pretty, OK. Anyways, you guys know the frame rate is bad. I'll stop complaining about the frame rate. Um, and also, this thing goes to sleep, because I forgot to set it in the um, manifest to not go to sleep. Uh, OK, so as you see, as I'm moving, I'm moving my head, I'm kind of moving around this really quick hack of a uh, world of monsters that I want to shoot. When I tap my finger, I'm stop going to sleep. Um, come back. Here we go. When I tap my finger, I can shoot these things. Uh, so basically, it's like a glass shootout. So you're moving your head to shoot. And obviously, this is in demo mode, so none of the monsters or uh, cubes are moving at you and killing you yet. Um, but they can be very scary if they are, say, replaced with real monsters in non-demo mode. Uh, yes. So um, this is using absolute positioning, center fusion, everything together, and then Vincent's um, nine axis magic stuff. So moving around. But yeah, the frame rate is horrible. So again, this is something you guys should try out for a better frame rate experience. And like what I, what I said earlier, move your head around, tap to shoot. OK, so finally, the coolest part is that because there is a camera on this, you can do computer vision augmented reality. So let's get rid of all the silly sort of you know sensor fusion stuff, and let's do real computer vision stuff. And. Yep. I'm going to have it load for a few seconds. OK, so basically, markless AR computer vision really quickly, camera input process for feature points. Um, and then you can do two kinds of things. You can do it for image recognition. For example, you might want to know what that painting over there, who painted that or something, load metadata from that. Or you can also extract a post, post tensor inference and do 3D object placement. So for my demo, I'm going to need someone to give me like a you know, piece of paper with crap on it, some advertisement or something. Random person. Oh, you guys have got to have like flyers and stuff. 
There is there a flyer for this event? There. Intel card Pizza Hut. Logo, this will be like interesting, that. actually. Intel card of Pizza Hut. <laughs> uh, actually, let's let's see if Pizza Hut works. Okay, so I'm going to. Well, let's make sure it fills up the screen, screen so I don't end up, tra end up tracking people in the front row. All right, Pizza Hut, let's see. It's not that good to track with, but. Don't crash. It might crash. Um, yeah, I think that, oh, the other thing with the camera on this is that its focus is kind of pretty bad. So Uh, right now, I'm not doing image recognition. I'm doing full 3D tracking. Here we go. Oh, wow. the, the frame rate is really slow, but um, I just put a 3D object on his card, and it took, you know, it's, it's a single frame tracking methodology. Um, wow. And so the idea is that I'm tracking this plane in full 3D, and I can project 3D things on it. And wow, the frame rate is really bad on video. Uh, USB 2, it's uh, probably running at slower than, I mean, I, we could test the band rate that it's streaming video through this. Uh, but yeah, um, this is where you have this sort of camera on your head, and you can see sort of 3D objects in the world. Uh, it's kind of like a holodeck pretty much anywhere you go, but um, the key caveat is that we don't quite have um, atomic rearrangement solved yet, so if we, for example, extend our table like, you know, into a different shape or something, and like say that Intel guy starts to put his water bottle on this like now rounded table, it's gonna fall off. Uh, assuming that we could get past the Uncanny Valley and make 3D stuff as um, realistic as they could be. But um, right now it's kind of just running on my regular Android stuff from A-Reality 3D that um, it hasn't even been optimized quite for this TI, uh, TI chipset yet, uh, which is why it's also pretty slow and not tracking that well currently. Um, although actually, if I, does want someone to have like a larger piece of paper because the focus is pretty bad. So I'm, I, I think it's probably only tracking like a tiny part of this, like a sort of flyer or like you know advertisement that you found or. Uh, do you have an advertisement? Uh, something flat, that one, I think. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, all right. This is larger. I think this might work. It's showing up as green. Okay. More Pizza Hut. <laughs> Let's try Pizza Hut. <laughs> Is Pizza Hut a sponsor? Because they ought to be a sponsor. Yeah. All right, Pizza Hut. Oh, that's cool. All right. So now it's tracking a little bit better. Uh, or not. Come on. But it's in this axis, that animal. Can you make it like go in the Yeah, it should be able to, but it's not. Uh, I need, do you guys just have like advertisement stuff, like random flyer stuff? Yeah. It probably also slows down everything because it's trying to send the buffer, the frame buffer to this, and that's adding extra overhead to this tiny setup here. Okay, track it, and here we go. There we go. Oh, cool. Uh, Rawr. <laughs> 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 okay, and just add fire and it becomes uh, potentially dangerous. Uh, right, so um, I think Vera said she wanted some code, but um, in general, um, I don't know what everybody's kind of background is. I'm told that every line of code that you put in, you lose like 100 people. Uh, people fall asleep or something. So this is a very high level overview because also a lot of the sensor fusion stuff, it's, um, you can find snippets all over. There's all kinds of stuff that you can find from sensor events from the Android documentation. Um, but so very um, high level overview is that you want to you know, pull a few sensor events and import some libraries. And here are some good libraries to take a look at. And also you want to check if, well you want to use um, sensor events for accelerometer, gyroscope, and you, there's also rotation vector. And if you want the light meter, you can get light and um, magnetic field, and also camera for um, AR stuff. Um, and also if you want Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, there's Android that Bluetooth and um, libraries. Um, and I think the coolest part is trying this out. So I'll just, you know, 
hopefully you guys will have time to try it out. Uh, meanwhile, this is me. Call me Yosun. Uh, that's how you contact me. My Twitter handle is Yosun. I'm Yosun at Newsway. That's my first name backwards. And I'm 41577Yosun. Um, all right, so um, the slides will be available soon at hackingglass.com. Keep in mind that's hack and glass because apparently someone took hacking glass and also there's two G's there. So that's hack and glass. Think of it as a blog for people who hack in glass. Okay, hackingglass.com. Um, and I do AR stuff, um, A Reality 3D, Markless AR Real World Augmented Reality Platform. And um, I also do a lot of hacks, uh, a lot of hacks. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um. So the, the, the apps that you showed, yeah. like how many of them were like Android APKs, and then how many were like just for the lives? Um, so all of these were kind of just hacked together for a glass, but um, I'm pretty familiar with all the Android sensors, um, and I was kind of surprised that they worked just out of the box. For actually, for when I first um, saw the Mirror API, I had thought that they somehow um, had security constraints so that you can only run Mirror API Rust-based stuff on this. But then I just accidentally started ADB debug on my glass one day. Uh, ADB install rather, and apparently the APK went to Glass instead of my Android because like I had both of them connected, and like I was like, okay, I can just run an APK on on, on, my, on Glass, and then I just started seeing um, you know usual see what kind of sensors there are, and um, I found out surprisingly that um, there are all kinds of cool sensors. Like for example, uh, so this is like a sensor reading chart. Uh, it's not very large. Can you guys see it? Um, um, here we go. So and then some sample data. Um, yeah. So the app is going to look so small in the glass, right? You have to design a different UI for the UI. Yeah, it's um, designing for different form factors. There, um, there are a couple of designs for the suggestions, such as the fact that you don't have a one-to-one -one ratio for, um, you know, the traditional touch screen to your touch the screen is one-to-one, -one, but the display to touch is slightly different. Um, the screen itself is not actually that small because it's projected to about like eight to ten feet in front of you, and so it looks a little bit bigger. But the resolution is still very tiny, 640 by 360. Um, so it, it's, I guess you have to rethink about how you would design an app. And so I guess the cool part is that if you have an app already designed, the, con um, the core logic still applies. You can just reskin the UI and also remap the input to touchscreen or microphone or camera or something. Um, and why did Google like call it Google Developer Kit? Because Android, it's Android, right? You can just um, add new APIs to it and like make it compatible. For the um, I'm not speaking on behalf of Google, so I don't know exactly why. But also, it's not called Google Developer Kit. It's a Glass Development Glass Kit, I believe. Kit. Um, right now, I'm just using regular Android sensor stuff. I, I think they might have perhaps eventually a custom, a more customized build of ice cream sandwich that perhaps has. Um, some, I guess, um, other things that are not in the, you know, the sensor library. Um, who knows what Google has um, in store? So, I don't know. You're from Intel. I'm sure you're like, you know, VIP with like Google, and you can get their insider info, right? Oh, that's not your card. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So what happened to Jelly Bean? What What happened to Jelly Bean? Well, well time, which is like before Jelly Bean, so. Yeah, uh, again, I'm not from Google, I'm just a hacker. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I do a lot of hacks to the extent where I actually, you know, started something called prototype48.com. Um, but I, my guess to that would be this was announced like last year, and that was when ICS was still current. I'm pretty sure they started development during ICS, and so, you know, they probably want to push something out before having to. Uh, do more work to set it up for, um, you know, Jelly Bean or something. But I, I mean, eventually they might OTA upgrade to say Jelly Bean, perhaps, um, or even something that has like, you know, its own custom API that you know more stuff than what Sensor has. But um, actually, what's interesting is that if you take a look at the um, the hardware uh, teardown, there's actually a lot of stuff that. Uh, and we're not really sure what's what's there. Um, for example, the, the big stuff like you know the SanDisk and the Alpida, that's great, that's pretty obvious. But like, what is 
what is this thing exactly? You know, 14, 12, 03, 13. There could be other sensors on this. I'm not really a hardware person. I'm just speculating. So if anybody knows what, wait, did someone just, uh, <laughs> wait, what? That's the NSA chip. <laughs> That's the NSA chip? Yeah, it records all your, all your activities. What does 1412 stand for? <laughs> Is that like, I mean, I, I see the number 42 in there with one surrounding, I, um, and then there's all kinds of funny stuff. For example, it says um, greater than 9K. Uh, there's that weird sort of comic thing that you guys might have heard of. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that's kind of not totally identified. So perhaps the um, GDK might open up more sensors. Um, I guess we'll see. And GDK might eventually be released uh, when they OTA update it again. Um, because they've updated the, um, the, soft, the, the OS quite a, at, least, at least two or three times in the past few months. So um, perhaps it might be on Jelly Bean eventually. But uh, right now, it's just speculation. All right. So you're well. saying that so there are more restrictions on what you can do with the mirror, mirror API, right? Like, I don't think, like somebody um. said, you can get access to the camera using the Google Mirror API. But it seems like you can do more stuff with uh, native. OK, so just to clarify on two things, uh, I think when I first started, I was uh, really too brief on that because I just assumed that I guess you guys have heard of the two uh, diverging ways to do this. Um, there is the Mirror API, which is your classic REST-based stuff. You can be a full stack server development and just you know, really simple. You don't have to do any sort of native development. And then there's like you know native Android development, which is a sort of different path. Although you can actually say just you know package your you know HTML5 into a browser wrapper and then port that into the native app and do it that way. But um, the point is that that's not using the, um, the um, Mirror API. It's um, using your traditional Android native app development techniques. And so the Mirror API, I think they have a way to call the camera, but it's probably like a still image. Um, so when you have native, it's basically you can access anything on the device that's supported through the Android um, Android ICS OS that it's running, which is pretty much everything in the Android documentation here. Um, so does that sort of answer your question? Because yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, your API, I've heard like it's very restrictive. Like you can't even run like JavaScript. You have to send some kind of JSON, and then it gets parsed, and uh, that's what gets rendered. Like it's very limited, and Google wanted to be like that because they don't want to show ads and all kinds of other. Um, so I think that Mirror API, while limited, um, the, I mean, REST-based, it's um, supposed to be RESTful, which in theory should make it not drain the battery as, as bad as, say, just a native app that's, say, running all the time. Um, and so, but it, it's definitely very limited as to what you can do from that. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you can uh, do video with Mirror API, but you can only do still images from camera. Um, I mean, until they add some sort of endpoint for that. Um, and that's the other thing with Mirror API. You have to depend for them to add the endpoints. Uh, whereas if you just use uh, Android, uh, regular Android that you know, you've done on Android phones and tablets, uh, pretty much everything uh, in the Android docs, you can use it. Um, so I guess Mirror API can be a lot better when they add more endpoints uh, for their REST-based stuff. Yeah. And how did you get two glasses? So I'm actually working on a multiplayer Bluetooth game. Uh, so, and of course, one of these glasses got taken apart. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but the interesting part is that when the, um, the um, Catwig people took it apart, supposedly they put everything back together relatively intact. So this might be their original taken apart glass. I mean, it's orange, right? Um, but I'm making multiplayer games on glass. Uh, so hence why I have multiple glass. Um, question. What kind of market is there for Google Glass apps? Like right now, I, I know it's it's really limited release. Uh, is there some sort of projection, or, or, or are there actual people paying for? Um, Google Glass? Okay, so I've been into augmented reality for quite a bit, and I think it's kind of cool that some a company as big as Google is putting effort into this. And so augmented reality has been a very sort of niche sort of geek hobbyist sort of thing for the longest time. And I think when there's a large company like that pushing the drive for it, and um, that sort of momentum might potentially make this more mainstream. However, I, right, right now, it's just such a small number of people with glass. 
And of course, there's a lot of glass variants out there. Um, just like how you know, there's the first Android phone, eventually there became like you know a thousand other variations of Android. I imagine that if this becomes a popular form factor, there will be a lot of different kinds of um, glass star or something. Um, um, and I guess your question is whether you think it's going to be like a viable market or. Um, well, I mean, like, are there like people working on like a large production team yeah. for Glass? Um, I think that right now a lot of people are waiting for the official GDK because um, perhaps that might have some more optimization techniques, especially with the tiny battery here, 570 milliampere hour, which is again, that's I think your iPhone 3GS had like twice that, so um, it's very, very sort of minimal. Um, and I think others are waiting for, say, when and if a consumer edition does come out. Um, there's kind of a lot of sort of, well, it, it's, um, it's still very early. Um, I think that so far it didn't take that much time just to apply what, you know, my current Android skill set to make hack together some apps on this. It's kind of cool to see what you can hack on this. Um, and I think some sort of Bluetooth multiplayer thing on this could potentially be a fun thing to use um, Glass for. Um, and I guess eventually, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to test out a micro theory on a microcosm of, I think, the couple thousand glass owners out there. I'll try releasing an app and see, you know, if, um, so the, basically the Bluetooth um, shooter thing and see if that sort of spreads people or something. Um, I'm not sure how I would like charge for it or something. It could be like some sort of setup where, um, because basically it'll be an APK and and I mean, the only way to install um, on Glass is to just a basically ADB and ADB install the APK. So uh, there there's a Play Store app for Glass. Yeah. Um, there is a official app from Google, but that doesn't let you install anything on it. It lets you um, basically connect your Glass to Wi-Fi. You can pair it to you know your your phone, and that you can. Um, very basic features on that. And you can also Bluetooth stream video from your glass to your phone, which is, that's, that's pretty cool. But um, it doesn't let you install um, apps. So it would be kind of people who know how to use um, a, the Android debug stuff, which actually it's um, just, it's not that hard, but it's um, also you have to open a terminal for that. Um, I guess create some sort of in installer, but um, well, it, it's still, a lot of stuff is unknown. Um, okay, I'm just Yilson on Twitter. Feel free to send me your questions. All right.